Viewer, I just want to tell you something about the Agni-5 missile and what the Prime Minister uh, has actually announced is, uh, is, is an enormous, enormous milestone and a step forward as far as India's nuclear delivery system technology is concerned. I'm going to ask our producers to pull out, uh, you know, archival footage of the Agni-5 missile because there have been more than a handful of tests of the Agni-5 already. But the reason why this particular test has been singled out uh, uh, you know, to be highlighted and spotlighted by the Prime Minister is because this is not just an ordinary ballistic missile test. Uh, this is a nuclear missile test, obviously not with a nuclear warhead for the test, but for this demonstration of capability and range, where the missile itself is uh, uh, constructed uh, with a higher technology, better technology, more accurate and capable of confusing anti-missile systems using something called MIRV, which is multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles, which basically means the warhead, not very far from the target, actually splits into multiple re-entry vehicles, and therefore it's like one missile splitting into several different re-entry systems to hit the target, and therefore makes the job of defenses of your enemy, their anti-missile systems, their ballistic missile defense systems, uh, uh, it completely jams them up or at least attempts to jam them up and confuse them, therefore increasing exponentially the efficacy and impact of your nuclear strike. Remember, the Agni-5 is a nuclear-capable missile. It's not meant for conventional wars. It's not even a conventional weapon. It is precisely used, uh, Gaurav, and to bring you back in as a weapon that is uh, a present in the Indian arsenal in order to prevent any kind of provocative attack from the other side. Because remember, India's nuclear policy is very clear. India has a no first use nuclear policy, which means India would never fire the Agni-5 first at any country. But should any country uh, dare to, uh, to conduct a nuclear attack on India, big or small, then missiles like the Agni-5 would be used to make sure that that country ceases to exist. Total and complete destruction of the aggressor is guaranteed under India's nuclear policy and that's where the Agni-5 is an element. The technology that the Prime Minister has endorsed and applauded today through his tweet and through his statement perhaps shortly, uh, uh, probably a video statement also that the Prime Minister is going to be making very, very shortly, basically is to commend India's uh, you, you know, rocket men and women, rocket boys and girls of the DRDO, uh, uh, you know, all the way back to Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, scientists before him, all the way down to the, <coughs> beg your pardon, the current missile scientists and aeronautical clusters that continue to research and deliver such amazing weapons means that India, its strategic forces, its deterrent, its nuclear deterrent is... Uh, is in incredibly good hands with India's scientists. Gaurav, big day for DRDO. Uh, you know, you couldn't get a bigger pat on the back than from the Prime Minister. The Agni-5 is operational, but this is also a sign that even your existing weapons are being fine-tuned. Uh, you know, they're being upgraded. They're being given even better technology because as we know, countries like China, like with India, are building anti-missile and ballistic missile defense systems. And we need to make sure that if we are aggressed upon by countries like China or others with tactical nukes or other nuclear systems, the response should be so terrible, so absolute, so utterly destructive that no country will dare to make that first move. That's what this is about, Gaurav. Shiv, this was technology that was continuously denied to India. No country wants to share this kind of technology and that's why Agni-5 is extremely, extremely crucial. Um, the fact that it has a range uh, of, of over 5,000 kilometers, some argue up to 7,000 kilometers, not yet the intercontinental ballistic missile uh, with a range of 10,000 kilometers, but Agni-5 is capable of sending out that message to India's adversaries that, that salami slicing, nibbling of Indian territory or 
underlying those designs are completely unacceptable and should there be uh, a strike at India, India is well capable of responding. India has been working continuously on the triad. That triad also becomes extremely crucial. As you very rightly pointed out, Agni-5 is a land-based missile, but India is also testing uh, sea and subsea uh, submarine-launched uh, uh, nuclear missiles. India is testing uh, all those systems so that the triad is completed. Now, the Divyastra test becomes extremely crucial. The timing of this test is extremely crucial because there was some apprehension that India's adversaries could try Try something when the entire focus of a nation uh, is on elections and that is where uh, India's adversaries could try something but this message clearly goes out with troops deployed at the line of actual control with depth areas well covered with uh, Air Force uh, uh, adopting a, a, a very very aggressive posture to defend India's territory and this, then this missile text, this takes place where the Defence Research and Development Organisation is being congratulated by the Prime Minister, sends out a strategic message not just to the adversaries but also to those who depend on India for protection and those who are still wanting to fight that adversary. So very important message that the Prime Minister has just sent out to the Defence Research and Development Organisation for the first successful flight test of the Divyastra. I want to just, uh, Gaurav, stay with me. I want to share some uh, wonderful, uh, you know, little nuggets and factoids about today's test and why it's so important and why the Prime Minister, uh, you know, has singled it out for this kind of praise. Uh, now, Mission Divyastra is the first flight test of the Agni 5 with the technology that I just described to you. This will ensure that a single missile can deploy multiple warheads at different locations. So it doesn't need to be just one target. It can be different multiple targets with just one missile. The project director is a woman and has significant women's contribution. This is something I want to uh, explain to our viewers. There is absolutely nothing uncommon or abnormal uh, you know, or special about a woman leading this program. Viewer, multiple... Indian weapons projects, including past Agni projects, have been led very, very capably by women. There are hundreds of women scientists on par with men in, in many ways, way ahead across different weapons uh, uh, programs in the DRDO. So it should come as no surprise to anyone that a woman has led this particular uh, project called Mission Divyastra. With the test of Mission Divyastra, India has joined a select group of nations who have this multiple independently targetable uh, re-entry vehicle technology or MERV technology. The system is equipped with indigenous avionic systems and high accuracy, uh, high, high accuracy sensor packages which ensure that the re-entry vehicles, which is basically means the, the split up warheads targeting different targets, reach the target points within the desired accuracy. The capability is an enunciator of India's growing technological prowess. So this is huge. This is an absolute milestone. There's no question that this is a massive uh, uh, you know, technology leap as far as India's nuclear deterrent is concerned. So along with the Prime Minister, we applaud the men and women of the DRDO, the scientists, the program team, the project director, the telemetry system uh, 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 teams uh, that are in the Bay of Bengal and the Indian Ocean who would have been tracking this missile. A huge amount of effort goes into developing a missile, building a missile and then testing it successfully in this manner. So our big salute to the entire Divyastra team for executing this so wonderfully and for the Prime Minister for putting the spotlight on something that deserves attention and usually spends all of its life under a shroud of secrecy.